الحمد لله الحمد لله الذي هدى الصلاة والسلام على عباده الذين اصطفى خصوصا على سيد الرسل وخاتم الأنبياء وعلى آله وأصحابه الذين اشتبى أما بعد فأعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم وعباد الرحمن الذين يمشون على الأرض هونا وإذا خاطبهم الجاهلون قالوا سلاما والذين يبيتون لربهم سجدا وقياما والذين يقولون ربنا اصرف عنا عذاب جهنم إن عذابها كان غراما إنها ساءت مستقرا ومقاما والذين إذا أنفقوا لم يسرفوا ولم يقتروا وكان بين ذلك قواما والذين لا يدعون مع الله إلها آخر ولا يقتلون النفس التي حرم الله إلا بالحق ولا يزنون ومن يفعل ذلك يلقى أثاما يضاعف له العذاب يوم القيامة ويخلد فيه مهانا إلا من تاب وآمن وعمل عملا صالحا فأولئك يبدل الله سيئاتهم حسنات وكان الله غفورا رحيما صدق الله العظيم رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم when he was asked about his mission of coming to this world his response was that i have been sent to connect people to their rabb subhanahu wa ta'ala people who are broken off their rabb subhanahu wa ta'ala and because of that they lost their status as human being i have been sent to connect these people back to their rabb subhanahu wa ta'ala when we look at the teachings of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam or in simple words we may say that teachings of this deen of al-Islam we would realize that Islam made this connection so easy that there is no way any human being can say that I cannot connect myself to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala there is no way that I can do it. It's impossible for me. People came to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam with those type of thoughts. That, no ya Rasulullah, I don't think I can make it. And before that person left the gathering of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he was convinced that this deen is for him and his Rabb subhanahu wa ta'ala is always welcoming him no matter what he has done in his past. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala not only is willing, is looking forward to forgive him. A person came to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and said, Ya Rasulullah, I'm ready to become Muslim, but I have done such horrible things in my past that I don't think there is any forgiveness for it. Rasulullah said, how could you say that? He said, Ya Rasulullah, 
Let me just tell you one of the things I have done. I had a beautiful daughter. Before my wife gave birth to that child, when she was pregnant, I had left the town. I came back about seven years later. When I came back, I asked my wife, what happened to that pregnancy? What did she deliver? And she told me that she delivered a child that have died. Our neighbors had a young girl and she used to come and visit us very often. She would be at our home many times. Uh, I used to make her sit with us and eat also with us. And I really loved that girl. One day I said to my wife, how nice it would have been if we had a girl like this one. That day she opened up and she asked me, she said, would you really love to have a daughter? He said, after seeing this one here, I would really love to have a daughter. You know, in the days of Jahiliya, they used to consider it to be an insult for a person to have a girl, to have a daughter. And still, in many traditions, in many people's minds, may, although we may not speak it out, that thought comes up sometime that, okay, I wish you had a boy. Upon the birth of a girl, many times we hear this guy, I wish you get a boy. Yes, having the mix of both is good and everyone would love to have it, but it is a na'mah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It is a great rahmah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And as far as reward is concerned, let me tell you this. As far as reward is concerned, there is no comparison between raising a boy and a girl. The reward of raising a girl is much greater than the reward of raising a boy. People don't realize this. When Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said in the hadith, a person who raises three daughters or someone who, whose father died the, uh, and they became orphans and he raised his sisters, if a person would raise three girls, sisters or daughters, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, if he has fulfilled their rights, his responsibility towards them, and he taught them what they were supposed to learn, and then he fulfilled his last responsibility of marrying them to the right person, the hadith says, he will be in Jannah with me just like he puts two fingers together, that just like these two fingers are together, he will be with, in Jannah with me like this. <clears throat> but that was a tradition, that if someone would have a baby girl, they would like to, not only that it's an insult, they would just get rid of her, they would kill her. So when she was convinced that he really loves daughters now, she told him one day that this girl that you see in the neighbor's home, this is our daughter. After delivering this girl, I thought once you come back, you're going to kill her. So therefore, I handed her over to our neighbors for, him, for them to take care of her. Since for them, this was not their daughter, so they don't want mind, they won't mind keeping her in, her in their home. But people would not keep their own daughters in their homes. So when I told him this, she said, he says, oh yes, I, mean, I would love to have it in our home. Let's take her back. And he says, we took our daughter back to our home. Then the same Jahiliya came up in his mind. And one day, he takes his daughter out. No one knows where he's going. And he's digging a hole. He says, Ya Rasulullah, as I was digging, 
the dirt was getting on my cloth and she was cleaning my cloth for me and she's saying dad what are you doing your clothes are getting dirty and she kept on cleaning my cloth until I dig I got a deep enough hole that I can bury a person in it I threw her in it and then I started throwing the dirt over her and she was crying Dad, please don't do this. You don't have to keep me with you. Just send me over back to those people. Let me live somewhere else. I won't be burdened on you. She kept on crying and begging me. But I didn't want to have a daughter in this world. Until I buried her alive. And she was crying and shouting. <coughs> now, after Islam, he realized what type of sin that was. And he feels that there is no forgiveness for it. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was so shocked, so upset. As he's hearing and he's crying and he says to him, okay, repeat this once again to me. Tell me once again, how could you do something like this? Now, he's in a position where he knows the ayah, إِنَّ اللَّهَ لَا يَغْفِرُ أَنْ يُشْرَكَ بِهِ وَيَغْفِرُ مَا دُونَ ذَلِكَ لِمَنْ يَشَعَ Allah will not forgive shirk besides shirk in the Akhirah, he will forgive anything, whatever he likes to forgive, he will forgive. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam wants to tell him that, but there is some hesitation. You know, how could you do something like this? And therefore, he is not telling him these words. He doesn't want to tell him at this time. He knows this is the ruling, but he cannot. He cannot utter these words at this time after hearing that from him, that this is what you have done. And she was crying, she is begging you, she's your girl, she's your daughter, and you would do something like this. You don't do something like this to animals. <coughs> and finally, Jibreel alayhi salatu wasalam came with the same ayah, repeating the ayah that Ya Rasulullah recited this ayah to him. Let him know whatever he did in the days of Jahiliyyah, that's done, and now after Iman, these things are forgiven and he. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's doors of the Rahmah and forgiveness are still open for him. Which shows that this door of forgiveness is always open. Of course, as we see that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was not saying that time. Because of the type of sin this person has committed, and what do you think could be worse than this? And just think of any sin a human being can commit in his life. What can be worse than something like this? Seven years old girl, beautiful girl. You know, if you see, when we know girls, they are the beautiful, most beautiful thing in the world. And a person would do something like this to her. Another Sahabi came, in another occasion, and he says, Ya Rasulullah. For me, I don't think there is forgiveness at all. Why? What did you do? He says, Ya Rasulullah, this is in the days of Jahiniyyah. I committed zina. And then, when that girl had a, she became pregnant, and when she had a child, I killed the child. One of the Sahaba Ridwanullah who was sitting there, he says to this person, he says, Zina and Qatr. The worst two sins in Islam, the most major sins in Islam. Just go away. Don't even talk to the Prophet. Just go away. Don't sit in this gathering. This is how upset that Sahabi was. And this person felt so bad, and he gets up and he's leaving. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam calls him. That these things were done in the days of Jahiliyyah. Al Islam yahdimu kama kana qabla. By believing in the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, in the oneness of Allah, in the prophethood of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and taking the shahada, all of that past is forgiven. You're studying a new life. All of those are forgiven. Make sure that. You never repeat anything similar to this anymore. The doors of the forgiveness are always open for human beings. 
Of course, this is not to encourage our souls to do anything like this. If a person intentionally and after knowing all of this would do it, Wallahu alam what will happen. It's in the hands of Allah. But we don't want to be presented to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in a situation where a person openly is confronting Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Ya Allah, you said not do it, not to do it, and I'm doing it. Of course, it's something that is very similar to shirk then. This is what shirk is. A person openly denies Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, refuses to believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But when a person has committed mistakes, and who did not? We all have committed some mistakes in our lives. And I, by looking at your faces, I'm saying some, looking at myself, I can say a lot of mistakes, a lot of sins. Our life is full of it. But, subhanAllah, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was sent for all mankind. There isn't any human being in this world. There isn't any human being in this world who can get up and say that he was not sent for me because I have committed such sins that have no forgiveness. If a mushrik will get up and say this, we will say, say, Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah wa ashhadu anna muhammadan abduhu wa rasulah. That's it. Then he's for you too. There is no person in the world who can say that this deen is not for him. Who can say that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was not sent for him? Who can say that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam came to connect human beings with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? But in my situation, there is no way that I can ever be connected to Allah because I will always be rejected. No, there is no way that a person can make such a claim. The doors of the maghfirah, the doors of the rahmah, the doors of forgiveness, are always open for all human beings. And not only this, the very amazing part is, then we find Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in this deen, giving us some very special occasions, that okay, you have been running away, and you're, although my doors were open, throughout the year for you, but you refused to come. And, you kept on getting into your sins. And you kept on broking, on broking yourself away from me further and further. But here, I'll give you a special day. I'll give you a special occasion. Come to me on that day. Come to me at that time. As we know, the month of Ramadan is coming. What this month is all about is nothing but telling human beings that you people have been running away from me. Come back. Come back. Come back to me. SubhanAllah. Rabbul Alameen subhanahu wa ta'ala doesn't need to do this. He didn't have to give us all of this. And in fact, for me I would think, with all the great reward that a person achieves and gets during the month of Ramadan, the condition should have been that if you from Ramadan till next Ramadan you do these things, then next Ramadan is for you, otherwise not for you. But no restrictions, no conditions. Not only this. Even more amazing than this, when we look at the Rahmah subhanAllah, that as Ramadan is coming, before Ramadan, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants to wash all the human beings. He just wants to wash all of us, so that when the month of Ramadan comes, we all are ready to get the Rahmah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the sins are washed away. The sins of how many days? How many weeks and months, no limit. The sins of all the past can be washed away. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said in a hadith which is rated by Imam ibn Habban, Imam al-Bayhaqi, Imam Siyuti, and many other scholars of Islam. On the authority of Mu'adh ibn Jabal radiyallahu anhu, and the hadith is very authentic. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, يطلع الله إلى خلقه ليلة النصف من شعبان فيغفر لجميع خلقه إلا لمشرك أو مشاحن On the 15th of شعبان 15th night of شعبان Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala showers his rahmah on all the believers 
and he forgives all of them except a person who is committing any kind of shirk or a person who is carrying grudge against others. These two kind of people will not get the forgiveness and the maghfirah. Besides this, every person gets his share of the rahmah and the maghfirah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Look at the word maghfirah here. Why? We are only 15 days away from Ramadan. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is just giving us a good wash of our hearts. That get the maghfirah of Allah, get your heart clean from all the sins that you have committed in the past because hearts are getting sealed with all of these sins and the rust on this of the sins on the heart these hearts cannot be approved for the rahmah the rahmah of allah will only get into clean containers you go to someone and tell the person give me the water of zamzam in this container if i see that this person has blood in that container, I would never pour the water of Zamzam in that container. You don't deserve it. I'm not going to give it to you. Your container is dirty, is nudges, is unclean. If the water of Zamzam cannot get into that dirty container, the Rahmah of Allah is even greater than that. Water of Zamzam became that water because of the Rahmah of Allah. So the anwar, the nur of the Qur'an, the nur of iman, the nur of the salah and the ibadah will not get into this container. And the container is our heart. That nur will not get in there if this container is rusted. If this container is full of filth and dirt and najasa. But subhanAllah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made it so easy that regardless of what you have done in the past, this is the time you get the forgiveness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. What does forgiveness mean? Sometimes there are some very heavy stains and you try to wash them with water and soap that does not, they do not come out. And then you go and buy some chemicals and still they don't come out. And then therefore there are some very strong chemicals for those things. Sometimes you have to buy some very special chemicals. And nowadays there are all kind of chemicals that would eat up the rust, that will eat up a lot of dirt and stains. But subhanAllah, when I think about it, you cannot think of any, any chemical in this world that is stronger than the word maghfirah. The strongest chemical a person can have that regardless of how much filth is in the heart, how much dirt we have filled in there? One istighfar is enough to wash all of this out. It's such a chemical that we apply it there and it will just clean the whole heart, make it pure and clean like a glass. And now the anwar will start coming in there. Now the rahmah will start coming in there. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said in the hadith, At-ta'ibu min al-dhamb kaman la dhambala A person who seeks forgiveness from his sins is just like a person who have never committed one. Imagine, subhanAllah, sometimes I say to myself, can I be a person who would, whose heart would look like a person who have never committed a sin? But Allah is Rahim. He is Ghafoor. And you think about it, that Ya Allah, with all of what I have done and what's filled in my heart, my mind, the type of person I am. And still I'm going to be considered like a person who have never disobeyed you. And the hadith promises that. And we believe in the promise of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. His wa'ad is haq. His promise is always true. That at-ta'ibu min al-dhamb kaman la dhambala. You seek Allah's forgiveness from your sins. You be like a person who have never committed a sin in his life. And this is the opportunity for us. <coughs> of course, at any time a person can do it. But especially as Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam promised us in this hadith, that on the 15th night of Sha'ban, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgives all the believers, all the people of Iman, they get the rahmah and maghfirah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And their heart gets ready 
to receive the rahmah of the, the anwar and the uh, barakat of the month of Ramadan. The condition is, on this night, we make sure that we seek Allah's forgiveness. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for his forgiveness. What to do during that night? Main thing, as I said, is maghfirah. A lot of time people wonder, I mean, what's the most important ibadah? The most important ibadah of, that, of, the, of the 15th night of Sha'ban is maghfirah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That is the greatest gift a human beings will get on that night that we need to have really is the maghfirah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And of course, obtaining the maghfirah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala simply means a person will do whatever he can to please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Which means standing with istighfar, seeking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's forgiveness, and whatever sins we remember, we specifically ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to forgive us for those, and promising him, Ya Allah, I will never do it again. The question will come into our mind. What if I did? I'm in a situation where I think I may get into it again. At least at this time, we need to promise Allah that I won't do it. Ya Allah, protect me. Make dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Ya Allah, protect me. So your promise is firm and you are not just making it up. Ya Allah, Inshallah, I will try to avoid it and I will never get into it. And you make the situation you, uh, to, for me that create the situations that I can avoid this type of sin. Ya Allah, Inshallah, I will look for that situation where I can stay away from it and I won't commit it. This is your firm intention. And that's all human beings can do. Then with our weaknesses, God forbid, a person falls into it. Again, do this istighfar. Again, we can go back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But this is the time when we really need to wash away our sins, clean our hearts, regardless of who the people are. Because Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, as he mentioned mushrik, with that mushrik, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam mentioned mushahin, a person who carries grudge in his heart, which, seem, which simply means, look into your heart, no hard feelings towards any person, no matter what the person has done for to us. Human beings, after all, are human beings. And we have done so much wrong to others. We forgive others, inshallah, others will forgive us, and at least if they won't, Rabbul Alameen subhanahu wa ta'ala will forgive us. Because we are forgiving others. This is the main thing that we need to do, and according to the local sightings that we try to collect all the data from all around, uh, 15th of uh, Sha'ban will be this night that is coming, tonight. According to that, 15th of Sha'ban should be tonight, and tomorrow will be the 15th day of Sha'ban, according to the local sighting. Of course, people who are going by calculations in other countries is different, but according to the local moon sighting, tonight will be the 15th of Sha'ban. And of course, it still is month of Sha'ban, regardless of the 15th or others. It's the month of Sha'ban, and we are in the, towards the end of the month of Sha'ban. All of these nights are extremely important. We should try to make the best use of them so that as the month of Ramadan comes, inshallah, we will start receiving the rahmat and the barakah and the anwar of our deen. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept all of us and God bless you. Aqulu qawli hadha wa astaghfirullah li wa lakum wa nisa'ir al-muslimina wa al-muslimat wa akhirullah wa alhamdulillahi wa alhamdulillahi wa alhamdulillahi wa alhamdulillahi wa alhamdulillahi wa alhamd